Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we break down the latest uh, research for you in approximately uh, 10 minutes or less. I'm here today with a new guest, uh, Dr. Majid Shakiri, uh, out of Athens, Georgia. Uh, is currently working at the USDA ARS location there, uh, focusing on the molecular mechanisms and genetic uh, aspects of, of wooden breasts and broilers. How are you doing today, Majid? Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for having me and just giving this opportunity today. Thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks for joining us. And, uh, you know, woody breast, wooden breast, uh, it remains uh, an important topic for the, the broiler industry. Um, I know you have a background in, in nutrition as well, so we'll maybe try to make that leak if there is a leak uh, later on in the episode. But yeah, let's just start to uh, kind of uh, let the audience get to know you a little bit. Um, where are you originally from? Uh, what's your career path up to this point? Okay, I don't want to just make it very long because I really have a long story just coming from. Uh, I'm actually from Iran originally, but... I started actually to do my master's degree in Malaysia. Most of my focus in Malaysia was about the stress condition, different stress, high start density stress, heat stress, and also transportation. So after just a while, after a few years, I just moved to Australia. I did my PhD there. My focus over there was nutritional and heat stress for broiler chicken, but was not limited for the only chicken. I was working with other animals like pig as well. But my focus always was on chicken. So after that, finishing my PhD, I got the opportunity to work for the best environment. I think University of Washington, Seattle, the Department of Medicine for three years. It was a very great experience working with the top scientists. And I learned a lot uh, from those people. Then the time came, I just moved on and I just joined the USDA and mostly work here. My, my main focus here on genetic and just impact on meat quality, which is actually our focus is the woody breast here. Right, right, yeah. Elevate bird well-being and improve profitability with Cargill's tailored nutrient solutions that deliver performance. Cargill is leading through applied nutrition leveraging deep nutrient insights and understanding of the animal's nutrient requirements to achieve your production and performance goals. Oh, very good. That's a very interesting background. And uh, yeah, I had seen you've been a number of places and, and uh, diverse species as well as, as topics that you've worked on uh, with your background in, in working in Malaysia and Australia. A good, good context for studying heat stress, which you've done a lot of there as well. And then we're dealing with uh, here in the, in the southeast uh, of the U.S. So, uh, woody breast, um, you know, we still don't know a lot about it. Um, I guess from a fundamental and mechanistic standpoint, uh, can you tell us some of the, the work that you've been doing recently to try to understand that better? Yeah, sure. So, after I joined the USDA, just, you know, the team actually here, Dr. Brian Walkers, Dr. Zhang Hong, is a very good people, a good team here. I have a chance actually working with these very experienced people. So we have a lot of actually ongoing projects here, but because my background was about the nutrition and the physiology, and I have some genetics involved, I started to look into the woody birds a little deeper. The reason I want to just go back a few years ago when we talk about the woody breast, it comes back to the meat quality. And there are many factors involved. It's not only just environment. Sometimes just heat stress is one of the main reasons it causes a lot of actual costs for the industry, for the many farmers. But it's not limited to that one. We have nutritional problems. Sometimes we're just using some additives like a betaine. It's like an osmolite that it helps actually intestine and gut works better and also from true, you know, intestine is the main part it affects all the bodies. If the microbials and just infections get into the body, means you are done. The chicken actually is done. So one of the most important impact is on meat quality. And the main reason I here actually focus on the wood dress because it's now impacting the industry a lot and just cost millions of dollars, especially for the US. So this is actually a big deal for the farmers here because 
He talked to dog farmers all the time here. We have a chance to talk to them face to face. They talk about this issue and they lose a lot of money for just something like this problem. So let me just a little, I want to just back forth to the actually why we are doing the meat quality now, but not improving the production. One thing we all know industry here, US is the biggest poultry production, meat production and exporter. In order to keep this ranking, we need to have a better quality of the products. So it's not only just producing the meat. If we don't have a high quality products, means you can't export them. They don't buy it. So when we come to this fund, so we can call it meat quality matters here. And also another point here, two reasons why there's so much focus on poultry meat is because it's inexpensive and also it's easy to grow. Not easy to grow, it's shorter time of growing. Eight weeks you can offer this product to the market. One of the problems now we are facing now, because the problem is we want to produce more meat to meet the, the demand of the market. But we have to make some modifications, like a genetic modification, or nutritional modification. All this has some consequences for us. One of the consequences now we are actually dealing with is a booty breast. That I said is costs a lot of money for the, the industry. I work a lot on the nutritional side and the physiology and the gut health. And somehow all of these ones can be helpful to improve the condition. But sometimes it's not possible to just apply some condition. For example, for heat stress, it's very costly to just change the whole building or equipment to provide some very optimal condition for the chickens. For nutritional, it's not 100% working. At least we, don't, we haven't actually have any study confirmed. Actually, we use one nutritional diet that completely actually, actually can just help the body breast. There's, at least up to now, there's no studies. So we came up actually with this idea. It actually was in my mind for maybe two or three years that one of the things actually all the research actually just are in common. They said these problems is related to mitochondria. Okay. So we have, like, no, we, have, we know actually most people that say, okay, mitochondria is an issue here. One thing that I just came up is just that looking into something that controls mitochondria. So what controls mitochondria? So if we can solve that issue, we might actually help the mitochondria to improve. Better mitochondria means we, we probably have less woody breasts. That's actually, we want to just connect it. So I want to just talk about it. One of the enzymes has never been studied and it's the first time we are actually studying the woody breast chickens and even chicken. I haven't seen it actually in a study actually working with this enzyme that controls the mitochondrial function. The name is ribonucleotide reductase enzyme. Very shortly, I want to see what, what is this that enzyme is because we want to just know what is this one, why we are studying this one. So it has two subunits, subunit one and two. Subunit two is actually related to DNA synthesis and mitochondria DNA. So it means if this RNR, I'm just calling it here RNR to make it easier to just say. So if RNR doesn't work, simply if I want to just break it down, if it doesn't work, it means we don't have a DNA synthesis enough. Or if you don't have a DNA synthesis, it impacts the mitochondria DNA. So when the mitochondrial DNA has issues, means it's not functioning, it increases the oxidative stress, tissue damages, which actually we are actually observing the woody breast chickens. In our study also we did actually, we saw actually there's a high fibrosis and also high ROS rust in actually our woody, woody chickens. So we come up actually to down here, looking at this uh, the gene, and we know this gene actually impacting the mitochondria and meat quality. We had some progress, fortunately, we are actually having actually more work, and we are trying to see if this enzyme has actually impact on other uh, pathways, like a gut or other organs, mostly actually our focus on intestine and the liver. And I know it's... There's a lot to say about something that has not been done because we are also have many questions in our study because we don't know if our hypothesis is correct or not. But based on the results we have got, it shows there's something going on. 
because we examine several genes related to the mitochondria, all shows actually there's a reduction, it's a downregulated for the breast. And as I said, NM2, RNA2 is a subunit of RNR, is a responsible for actually DNA synthesis and mitochondrial DNA. So there is actually kind of linked to this far. I know there are a lot of the nutritional studies, there are a lot of physiological gut studies, but if you can just basically, if you can overexpress this enzyme in tissues, we can just it is actually a hypothesis. I can't really 100% sure say that, um, but there have been a study actually shows if when there's an overexpression of RNR, they have they could stabilize tissues, cell death, and cell condition. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Yeah, yeah. No, very interesting, and I think it will be uh, very impactful. Uh, if, if, you know, this could be a way to, to alleviate the issue for sure. I hope so. I hope so. We are just doing our best to just maybe we can just have some questions or some answers. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's great. And again, I, I commend you and your group for, uh, you know, bridging the gap between the molecular and cellular science and the practical applied problems. So uh, it's really exciting to, to see that. Yeah, but and, and at the end of actually here, I have to appreciate all these people actually around me. They're just doing a great job. As I said, Dr. Brian Bokier, Dr. Hong Zhang, Dr. Wei Kong, they're actually great people. I'm just happy actually working with these people that are experienced. You know, you never, you never, no one is perfect. We need actually people around. And also, I have to just thank you all my family members. Actually, they supported me all the way from Malaysia to up to here. Just on here, my wife, my brother, and my parents. They, they, they did a great job, and and I'm very glad actually to be here. And today is actually a great opportunity to just talk about this thing. Yeah, great. Well, it's it's great to have you, and we had the opportunity and. Uh, Tell uh, Dr. Wee Kong I said hello as we used to be uh, former colleagues uh, at the University of Arkansas. So I miss uh, getting to see him in the, in the hallway as well. He's just his lap is just across my lap. It's just we just oh, great. we say hello every day actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, uh, well I think that's it, Majid, and I uh, really appreciate it. And if you have anything else you'd like to add, um, otherwise we'll look forward to, to more data on on woody breasts and the molecular mechanisms and how R and R might be at uh, play there. Thank you. Thanks so much. Great. All right. Have a great day. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.